The rich are getting richer and the poor getting poorer. We hear this statement all too often, but is this actually the case? Imagine if I arranged all households in the U.S. in order of their annual household income and then broke them into five groups. We call these groups quintiles. The result would be five groups of households arranged by income level, each quintile representing one-fifth of all households in the U.S. From 1967 to 2009, the share of total income for the top quintile increased from 43.6% to 50.3%. During the same time period, the income share of the bottom quintile fell slightly from 4% of total income to 3.4%. These two statistics seem to support the claim the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. However, those statistics alone do not tell the whole story. They overlook two vital points that should concern those who care about the welfare of the poor. First, the share of total income doesn't tell you whether absolute income, adjusted for inflation, increased or decreased. That is, it doesn't reveal whether or not households were able to afford more or better goods and services. Second, these measures do not tell us what has happened to particular households. Household income can change from year to year, but these quintile measures don't track that. They are unable to reveal whether particular individuals or families experienced income mobility. So let's take a deeper look. From 1967 to 2009, the real mean household income of the top quintile increased by about 71%. So the rich by this measure did get much richer. Yet over the same period, the real mean household income for the bottom quintile also increased by 25%. So the poor did not get poor, they actually got richer as well. This means that Americans in the lowest income quintile could afford more goods and services in 2009 than in 1967. But these measures still fail to capture the importance of income mobility at the individual household level. Therefore, we need to follow individual households to determine whether the household has experienced either absolute income mobility through changes in their real income or relative income mobility by moving from one quintile to another. For example, if we look at households in the bottom quintile in 1987 and then follow those individual households until 1996, we will see that about 45% of them have moved up to a higher quintile. If we look at the next 10-year period, we find that movement again, with 40% of households moving up to a higher quintile. And what about the top 20% of income earners? We find mobility there too. About 42% of households that were in the top quintile in 1987 had fallen to a lower quintile by 1996. And in the following 10 years, another 40% of top income earners moved to a lower quintile. This is pretty incredible. Just by looking at the top and bottom income groups, we see that there is remarkable movement across the income distribution over time. And what about income mobility across generations? Do we see the kids of the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer? If you examine data about children who grew up in the top 20% of households in the late 1960s and early 1970s, by the year 2000, their median income was about the same as their parents' income had been after adjusting for inflation. So by that measure, the children of the rich are not any richer than their parents. Meanwhile, if you look at the data for children who grew up in the poorest 20% of households in the late 1960s and early 1970s, by the year 2000, 82% had higher real income than their parents. Not only a little higher, their median real income was double that of their parents. This is really incredible. And it's evidence that the possibility of upward mobility in the United States is still very real. Now these facts do not discount the real problem and difficulties still faced by those who are poor, but they do suggest there have been more improvements for the poor in the last 40 years than many people believe. To continue those improvements, we should seek ways to expand opportunities for income growth and with it, greater absolute mobility for those across the income distribution.